Okay, I think we've allowed everybody to join. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to try something new here today. The first thing I want to do actually is go over who is on the call with us. So I'm going to jump to another slide real quick here. Let me see if I can get that going. Uh, I'm skipping ahead a couple slides. Here we go. So uh, I wanted to ask a run a poll. So I've got Aaron, my buddy here uh, is on our leadership team and he's helping me do the webinar. Uh, Aaron, why don't you run this poll of who is on the call? So um, if you are a business leader, if you're an owner, a manager, or an executive, uh, why don't you select that there on the option? Uh, if you are an employee, select that. If for some reason there's an other, if you're retired or something else, uh, put other and we'll have that, um, have that information. One other question. So once we get some of those in, I'll ask the other question. We want to learn a little bit more about your situation. So if you don't see the poll, also you can uh, chat Aaron and let him know that you're having an issue. Okay, Aaron, why don't we run the other poll? So the other poll is to tell us about your situation. So we have two options on that one. Um, my company worked remotely before coronavirus or my company is working remotely for the first time because of coronavirus. So I just wanna get an understanding of where you are in this situation. So we'll give you just a minute to answer that. Again, option one, my company worked remotely before coronavirus or my company's working remotely for the first time because of coronavirus. So take a moment and answer that for us. Also, as we go through the presentation, if you have questions, there should be an option on your screen that says Q&A. And you should see something that looks like this. The uh, feel free to ask the host and panelists some questions, type your question here. If you have a question that comes up while I'm presenting, ask that question there. We'll have a, a series of those or a list of those. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll address some of those questions. So that would be great. Okay, so we've got our, a couple of our polls done. We're gonna do one more at the end. Uh, thank you for taking part in that. And we are going to jump back here into the presentation. So thank you, everybody. I will skip back to the first slide here. All right. So how to transition your business to remote work. Uh, my name is Matt Bowman. Uh, who is this guy? So why should you listen to me about that? Like I said, my name is Matt Bowman. I'm the president and founder of Thrive Internet Marketing Agency. Uh, we really appreciate you all attending today. Some of our attendees are clients of ours. Thank you, clients, uh, for being here. Some are not. Uh, thank you, guests. We're, we're excited to have you. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm a husband and father of four great kids. This is my family here, and I'm proud to call myself that. Um, also, the owner of Thrive and really love working here with an awesome team. Um, we were honored by the Inc. 5000 as being the number 78 fastest growing company in Texas. So that's quite an honor for us. And we are a remote company. That's why I'm here. I want to give back to you. Um, the goal of today is really just to provide some value to everyone on this call so that you can transition. If this is your first time working remotely, you can transition to working remotely uh, better. Hopefully there's some value. Hopefully you take some little nuggets away from this and can apply it directly into the situation that you're in. So let's talk about what we're going to cover here. First, I'm going to talk about Thrive Story. How did we become a remote workforce? Talk a little bit about that. And then I want to talk to two audiences. I want to talk to our business leaders and then I want to talk to our employees. And that's why we asked for the poll because we want to have an understanding of who is on the call uh, so that we can speak to each of those audiences. Um, and then I want to share some tools. So a remote work toolbox slide and hopefully give you guys some value on some of the tools that we're using and some of the other leading tools uh, in the industry that allow remote work. So uh, first thing, our story. So back in 2013, um, 
Thrive was a traditional business, meaning that we had a central office. All of our employees worked in the office every day. And uh, we had about probably seven employees at that time. And one day, one of my employees came in and said, Matt, my wife has been transferred to Orlando and we're moving in a few weeks. And it was a shock to me, had no clue uh, that was coming. We hadn't spoken of it before. And so we had a decision to make. Um, he and I had talked about in the past, uh, working remotely with some of our other possible employees that we were looking to hire. And, and so we kind of came up with a game plan and said, you know what, let's try this remote working thing and see if we can make it work. And so we did. Uh, we worked hard to, to make that work. And so that's how we stumbled into it. No, uh, no strategic plan or, you know, big, um, logic behind it. It was simply, I was going to lose a, an employee that I wanted to keep and had to work remotely in order to do that. And so, um, necessity was the, the driver of it. Um, since then we've grown to about 140 employees and we work all over the world. So this is actually a map of the locations of our team. We have people all over the U.S. primarily, but we do have people uh, in Europe, Africa, uh, and Canada, and, and Asia, and Southeast Asia. So we're all over. We have multiple time zones represented, and we are a full remote company. We also work with clients all over the country. So this is a sampling of some of our clients. You can see we're based in Texas, so we have quite a few there, but we have a lot of clients in Florida and California and up in New York and the Northeast, really all over the country. Uh, so we've already talked about who's on the call, so I'm gonna skip this slide. So first I wanna to talk to my business leaders. So business leaders, um, this is for you. And I wanna, wanna say first that remote working starts and ends with trust and accountability. So I, I hear from a lot of people that uh, ask me about our team and how do you work remotely? And often their response, these are, these are other owners or business leaders, their response is something to the effect of, I can't trust my employees to work remotely. Well, um, that's a problem because it, it couple things. One, if you take off to work remotely, I can't trust my employees. That's, that's a problem. <laughs> uh, but you have to have some trust uh, to be able to do this, but you can have accountability as well. You can have systems in place to make it work. And so I'm going to talk about how we do that. Uh, another concept that I would throw out there for a business leader is that healthy people make a healthy company. I say this a lot to our team. I talk a lot about how we need, I want to have a healthy company and it's going to, we're going to accomplish that by having healthy employees. So how do you define health? Well, I look at it as holistic. I look at it as healthy, you know, in your work, but also healthy in your personal life, in your finances, mental health, spiritual health, emotional health. So I'm not involved in all of the personal side of my employees lives. They don't want me to be, <laughs> but I want to help as much as I can and offer resources that I can there. And so what, what I'm getting at is there are some, some ways that remote working can become unhealthy. Uh, one of the downsides of remote work is you can be isolated and all of us are feeling a little bit of that right now in this global pandemic. And so isolation can become a mental health issue and we have to work hard right now to battle against it. I was talking with my wife the other night that there is going to be a whole lot of mental health um, kind of fallout from this situation around the world. Uh, people are, are dealing with a lot of things in their homes. They're feeling isolated. Uh, people are having loved ones die and they're not able to say goodbye to them. There's all kinds of really terrible things that are going on right now. So I just want us to acknowledge that and figure out how can we best support our employees and our workforce who are working remotely right now to help them have, have health in the current situation. Um, let's talk about some of the upsides of remote work. Uh, most people that I talk to that start working remotely, they say, you know, I'm actually surprised that I feel like I'm a little bit more productive when I work outside of the office. And I put a question mark there because I think this is one of the big 
um, challenges that a lot of businesses face is, well, if I let my people work remotely, how can I trust, again, the word trust, how can I trust that they'll be productive? So that's a really important point. We found, we, we did some tests initially before this employee moved to Orlando, we, we did some tests with remote work and we found also that we were more productive, we got more billable hours done, more accomplished when we were working remotely. And so that, that meant a lot to us. Also a huge benefit of remote work is that you have an expanded talent pool. When we hire, we hire the best person for the job, no matter where they live in the world. And so if you are used to hiring in a geographically constrained area, um, your city or your area, uh, then remote work is a real benefit. And so it's a pretty amazing thing that you can, you can develop a team all over the world. Third upside, no commute. So I know many of you are used to commuting um, some, sometimes long drives uh, into work every day. And so one of the things that our team just loves about working remotely is that they don't have to commute every day. It saves a ton of time and it gives them that time back to put into either their work or into their family time or whatever it may be. Also, we found that many of our employees prefer the freedom of remote work over the concept of the corner office or the, you know, the status of having the, the corner office. So that's a, that's a powerful thing with remote work too. That the freedom of working from home is, is very valuable. Um, quality of life over money. Again, I hear from my team as well uh, that, hey, I've been offered more money to go back to kind of a traditional job, but honestly, I don't wanna do that. The quality of life that I have now is, is what I value. You can also save a lot of money on office space. So I, I read an article that back in 1995, IBM was an early mover in this remote work concept and they uh, moved a lot of their employees to remote working and then they were able to sell office space that they were paying for and they sold it for almost $2 billion uh, back in 1995. So it's, it's also a strategic way that you can save on office space. All right, let's talk about another really important thing that I try to bring up to all of my employees and potential employees and that is that relationships outside of work are vital. We have a lot of young people that work at Thrive and some of them come from situations where their best friends are in the office at work and you spend a lot of time with those people and then um, you know they go out to dinner after work on the evenings, they hang out. Well, when you work remotely, you don't have that option. So people are gonna feel isolated if they don't live in a city where they're near family or church or a sports team or a gym or whatever it is for them that brings them that human to human connection and community, then we found that people really struggle. They really feel isolated if they don't have that can human connection outside of work. So that's a really important thing to consider. It's also really important for us to consider right now in coronavirus. We need to figure out how can we continue to make human connections while still keeping everyone safe. Uh, in this situation. So that's, I know a lot of people are trying to figure that out and uh, finding ways to connect, but not get too close. Also, um, remote work is a lot like culture shock. I don't know if m many of you have ever uh, lived overseas in a different culture, different country. I lived in Germany for a year after college and I experienced this curve right here on this screen. Uh, when I first got there, there was this honeymoon phase very much like many of you I've, I've, I've heard from and said, hey, this remote work thing is pretty cool. I don't have to commute to work and I'm, I'm more productive and I get to see my kids more often. Some of you, that's not a honeymoon, <laughs> but some it is. Um, and so a lot of us right now in this first few weeks of coronavirus are experiencing this concept of the honeymoon phase of remote working. Now, some of you may already be toward this anxiety level. When I lived in Germany, after about five months, four to five months, it wasn't as exciting anymore. It was now, I miss home, this is weird. I wish I could go back to what it was before. Those kind of thoughts were in my mind. And you're gonna experience that as a remote worker. 
you're going to go through this. I don't like this isolation. I wish I could be around people more. I miss the office. I miss, you know, I miss this, this, this. If you can understand that that's going to happen and understand that there is um, hope at the light at the end of the tunnel beyond that, an adjustment phase, and then finally an acceptance of a new normal, um, that's what we're going for. So one of the things that we ask all of our uh, applicants who are applying at Thrive is how many years of remote work experience do you have? And their answer isn't necessarily uh, a qualifier where they're, they'll lose or, or not the job, but we just wanna have an understanding of where do they stand on this curve? If they've been working remotely for five years, we assume that they have gone through these first three phases and they now are used to this uh, rhythm, this new normal of remote working. If they've done it for a few months or never done it before, then we know that there's gonna to have to be a, we're gonna to have to guide them through this process. And sometimes it's a challenge. We've had a few employees that uh, didn't make it, me meaning they got into this anxiety phase and they said, Matt, I just can't do it. I can't do it, I have to go back to the office. So uh, that's, I think it's a really important concept that's really stood out a lot to me and I've shared this numerous times with uh, employees who are struggling with one of these phases. Also, families. Families have to adjust just as much as the employee does. I don't know if any of you have seen this video. If you haven't, please go look for it. It's really hilarious, but it's basically a, a gentleman who is being interviewed on the BBC News in a live um, news interview, and he's got his office all set up, and his background all set up. Uh, the door's closed, but uh, his daughter and later uh, a little baby after her did not uh, know that dad was on the news and came walking into the room and hamming it up. And uh, <laughs> the poor guy was completely embarrassed. But I, what I would say is families have to adjust as much as the employee. Families have to learn that remote working is actually working. And I remember telling my wife early on in my remote work experience that, you know, if if the door is closed and it's work hours, I am not here. So, uh, you know, I'm not here. Basically, if you need me, call me and I'll answer if I can. And then we can talk uh, and, and I can help you if I, if I am able, but I just asked her to treat me as if I was not in the house. And that, that was an adjustment for her. And, um, and then families that have kids, uh, it's also a huge adjustment for them to try to figure out why, why can't I go into the office and, and talk to mom or talk to dad. So I know many of you right now have kids at home because they're out of school. And what I would tell you is, God bless you. I have four at home myself. Uh, it's a challenge right now, but we're going to make it through it. And, um, you know, we're just, we're just all doing our best at this point. This is a, a really challenging time. Uh, one other thing to business leaders or a couple other thoughts. Uh, this relates to the trust and accountability piece. And it's a really important question to ask any business, uh, whether they're remote or not, but especially if they're remote. And that's, does each person on our team know what winning looks like to them? So the concept there is, does everyone really know what they need to be doing and the things that are the levers that they need to be pulling, the behaviors and uh, tasks that they need to be completing in order to help the company grow and be successful. If they do, then working remotely is just a matter of where they happen to be in the world doing those things. If they don't, and the business has not defined that for them well enough, um, then maybe there is this thing where they're not quite sure what to be, what they should be working on. Uh, one framework that I would give you, there's many, many frameworks out there, but one that we use and, and have, have liked is this book called The Four Disciplines of Execution. And uh, I won't go into the whole concept of it, but basically you, number one, focus on a wildly important goal. Uh, number two, you figure out what are the lead measures that are going to help you achieve that goal. So if losing weight is your goal, the lead measures would be diet and exercise. Those are the behaviors that are going to result in the goal. Number three, you keep a compelling scoreboard. So you have to keep score and know where you stand. Again, uh, if you're losing weight, you wanna know weigh in each week and see where you stand. And then number four, um, create a cadence of accountability. So you wanna have regular meetings 
where people are reporting on those lead measures and are they are they doing them or not doing them and they're being accountable to their their team and others on the team and so it's a it's a powerful framework the concept here is that business owners often are very good at coming up with ideas uh, but not always good at executing on the ideas and so this is a framework to be able to execute on that I bring that up because again if our people on our team know what winning looks like to them and if they know what their lead measures are and what the wildly important goal is then there's much more likelihood of success whether you're working in an office or not working in an office I want to talk again to the business leaders about communication cadence so this is a big question I get uh, from my team and or, or from others who are asking about remote work and they say, well, how often do you communicate? How do you communicate? So this is something that's worked for us. Uh, every morning we have a beginning of day email. The concept of the beginning day email is that it's a list of priorities that the person uh, sits down at their desk. It's the first thing that they do. They send it out to the entire pod. It's what we call our small groups. We organize our teams into small groups of seven, or seven eight or less. Um, so that you can't get lost uh, within a large company. We want you to be a part of a small team. And you're also sending that included in the pod is your own manager. What this does is it shows a few things. One, you're awake. Uh, two, you're at your desk. Uh, three, you know what you're gonna be working on. You have a list of priorities and you're sharing that so that the entire team knows what others are working on. As we've grown, uh, some of our teams have transitioned the email to uh, an actual stand-up meeting. So stand-up meeting, you get on Zoom and you talk about these things in person rather than doing it in the form of an email. But both of those can work. And I would say that both of those are really critical uh, for remote teams. Uh, another thing that we do is end-of-day emails. So what we do is we have all of our employees, as they send their end of day email, they score themselves on a productivity score of one to 10. How productive do you think you were? Again, this goes back to trust. We're treating people like adults and we're asking them to tell us how productive were you today? Uh, also, we, they will report on the list of priorities that they completed. Uh, many people on our team actually track their time. And so they'll include the full timesheet with the notes of what they accomplished that day. And so I feel like my score today was this and here's why, and here's all the things that I completed. And they send that every day to their managers. So again, you, you want to have this regular cadence of communication. You want to frame it with this beginning of day email. That's a communication to the entire team. And you want to have an end of day email where they're scoring themselves on productivity and they're giving their report on what they completed that day. Also other virtual meetings. So beyond the daily, we make sure that everyone has a weekly sync with their manager. Um, we have monthly and all staff meeting. Uh, this is a screenshot of one of our recent all staff meetings and the content of these meetings is critical. I don't want to, I don't have time to go into what makes an effective one-on-one -on -one manager uh, employee meeting, but doing that remotely is very similar to doing it in an office. You wanna make sure that you have regular uh, communication on what the priorities are that need to be working on, what the hurdles are that you're running into, how can the manager help overcome those hurdles, and how can you move things forward? Uh, and also if there's any issues, uh, you know, addressing those things. Another concept I want to share is that even though we have amazing technology, uh, right now I'm speaking to all of you, uh, literally all over the world, uh, the reality is that in-person connections can't be replaced. Uh, I'm, I'm a Christian and I believe that we were designed to connect with others. Um, and so one of the things that we do is we have an event that we call Thrive Camp. And so once a year, we buy airline tickets and hotels and rental cars and food, and we bring our whole team together for a week. And we spend that time together to connect and grow as a team. Because even though I can get on Zoom with the whole team, uh, it doesn't replace uh, spending a week with them in person. So I'm saying that because right now, we know that we are restricted by that. We are restricted by you know laws and, and, and orders where we can't get together right now. And so we, we need to follow those things. 
but we also need to understand that when this is over, um, we need to find ways to connect and to get back together. So I'm, I'm going to be doing an emphasis when this is over of getting our team back connected. Uh, thankfully, we just did Thrive Camp in January. So we, we usually come off of that as a you know, real boost in our team morale. And uh, it's a big investment, but it, it's well worth it. We've done it now for seven or eight years. And it's, it's been really powerful for us. Okay, that's some concepts for business leaders. Now, I wanna spend a few minutes talking to the employees. So employees, let's talk about life as a remote worker. So first thing that we need to make sure that we're doing in life as a remote worker is building a routine. You need to have a time routine. You need to have a space routine, meaning that the space that you're working in uh, and then with your dress. I like to tell people that it's, it's a good idea to get up and get dressed as if you were going into an office. Uh, but just go to your, your home office. I also really highly encourage people to have a dedicated workspace in their home if they're able to, especially one that has a door that you can close. Again, that's to help family members, spouses, kids know that this is the protected space, workspace. Um, if you don't have that door, it's harder, especially for kids to understand what's going on. Uh, and then time, it's just good to have a time routine and be able to know this is when I'm going to start work. And especially if you're in a business like we are, where we're working with clients, it's important that we're working while they're working so that we can communicate with them in, in real time and, and be available to them. Also, it's up to you. It really is up to you. I've talked a lot about uh, trust from our business leaders. Well, that trust needs to be earned. And so it's up to you to maintain motivation, um, minimize distractions, Make sure that you're doing what is being asked of you to do and whatever it takes for you to do that. Everyone is different. Everyone is motivated by different things. Uh, everyone focuses in different ways. I can tell you for me, um, what motivates me is I, I come up with an idea of a reward. So I'll, I'll say, hey, if I get this done today, then tonight I can go to the park with my kids or, you know, or something like that that I want to do. Um, and so I work hard to get that thing done so that I can have that reward. Uh, also for me with distractions, I like to close my inbox because that is the biggest distraction for me, uh, bar none. And then I also like to listen to music. Uh, sometimes I'll put in some headphones while I'm working. That, that really helps me. Sometimes I'll just do it here in my office over the speakers. But there's something about having that background music that really helps me uh, hone in and focus and, you know, get stuff done. Also, it's really important when you're working remotely to have some level of a change of scenery. I mentioned earlier having a routine, but build into your routine that you're gonna change scenery some. A uh, Couple ways that I do this, I like to get up and, and go outside and just go for a walk. There's a park nearby here and I just go for a walk, a couple laps around the park and come back and I feel, I feel good, uh, I feel refreshed. Uh, another thing that I like to do is I will, um, this is non-coronavirus time, but I'll take my laptop and I'll go to lunch somewhere and I'll just tell the waiter or the waitress that I'm going to eat lunch, but after I eat lunch, I'm going to stay here for a while and do some work and ask permission to basically to take the table. And then I'll, I'll stay there, put my headphones in and I'll work uh, until dinner. And that's, that's a great time. I, I get a lot of my most productive work done. Uh, when I get out of the office and go work at a, uh, at a restaurant somewhere. Also, as a part of your remote life routine, you want to make sure that you're protecting family time. If you're married or have children, uh, it's really important to protect that. I have to say thank you to my wife uh, for helping me do this uh, early on in our marriage and really prioritizing family time. And her fingerprint has... Um, come in to thrive and, and we really work really hard when it's time to work and then we are off when it's time to be off and we set boundaries with our clients and with each other that we, we're not expecting you to work uh, at night or on the weekends when it's family time. So I think that goes back to the healthy, healthy people make a healthy company. Uh, let's talk about collaboration. So how to collaborate remotely. So again, for employees, uh, you want to make sure that you have overlap. If you're working with clients or other coworkers in different time zones, um, make sure there's some overlap. So if, 
if someone somewhere needs to work a little bit odd hours, then that's important. So my wife is German. I met her when I lived in Germany and we, we go back to visit Germany as much as we can. And when I'm in Germany, I will actually work central time zone hours. So there I have the morning off breakfast um, and then lunch. And then right after lunch, I'm starting my day, which is morning back here in Texas. Um, so we want to make sure that there's overlap in time zones so that you can connect with your coworkers and with your clients. Also screen sharing. Um, there's nothing harder than trying to communicate something with someone uh, either over the phone or over chat or over email and you you're quite can't understand. Get on Zoom and screen share. Uh, it makes it really clear. And so I would, I would highly recommend we do that all the time here say, hey, let's, let's screen share and show me what you're talking about. Uh, record meetings. This is really important. Uh, it's important for a few reasons. One, you want to be able to have a, an archive of conversations. So there's often times where I'll have a meeting with someone and then later I'll say, oh, I wish you were in that meeting. Uh, I wanted you to hear that update. Well, if you have a recording, you can share that. Uh, number two, for training purposes, we record a lot of our meetings that we have with our clients so that later we can go back and watch those meetings and critique them and get better and talk about what could we have done differently and how could we have done better in that scenario. Uh, so recording is really important for that. Uh, you got to make sure that you have a shared drive. So this is pretty common in today's workforce, but you want to make sure that you can share and collaborate files. Uh, we use G Suite uh, at Thrive. And so Google Drive is our, our shared drive. And so we want to make sure that everything is available to the team uh, in, in a place where they can find it. Uh, another concept with remote co collaboration, if we were a smaller team, um, there's this concept of, it's sort of the beginning of day and end of day email, but just a weekly, what have you been working on update? And uh, I was reading this in a, in a book about remote work. And it, they talked about that they just post uh, every week. This is a summary of what I've been working on. And so everyone can see that and kind of know what's going on uh, in each, each person's uh, priority list. Uh, I prefer to do that daily uh, and to, to track that with the, with the manager. Another piece for employees is make sure that you're staying personally connected. So especially right now um, with coronavirus, you want to make sure that you're having non-work conversations as well with your coworkers. So one of the things that we do a lot is what we call virtual lunches. It's exactly what it sounds like. You get on Zoom and you eat lunch together. Uh, you bring lunch to your desk and we try not to talk about work if we can. Uh, keep, it, keep it more personal and uh, fun and just, just get to know each other and connect. Um, also, we have a, a chat channel through Slack where we do all the kind of non-work related topics. So people are posting about their pets and their kids and what they've got going on. They're running marathons and buying a house and all those kind of things. So kind of a no work allowed chat channel that can allow people to connect. Also, it's really important for both employees and business leaders, just check in on each other. Unplanned check-ins can be way more meaningful than anything else. Uh, I try to do this. I've got a large team now, so it's a, a little bit harder um, to check in with everybody, but uh, I, I've gotten a lot of feedback from my team that, hey, when you reached out to me that time when I just started or you know, whenever I was going through a hard time, that really meant a lot. And so that's something that I would encourage all of us as, as people who care about our coworkers in general, whether you're a leader or an employee, to check in on each other. Another really important piece is about presentation. Presentation is key uh, for, for everyone here. So think about your background and think about your lighting. One of the things that we do at Thrive, you'll notice over my shoulder, I have a Thrive Canvas. <clears throat> we provide this for all of our employees uh, and we ask them to put it up in their home office so that you can see it in the background uh, of video call. Another thing that we do is we encourage a lot of our employees to move their desk out from the wall. So when you're, when you're setting up, uh, let's say a guest bedroom, it makes the most sense in terms of space to put that desk against the wall. And that's, that's good for space. The problem is that then puts the bed or a lot of other things in the background 
that could be distracting or could just not be as perceived as, as professional. It doesn't look like an office. Um, some people don't care about that. We found sometimes our clients do care about that. And so I put this image here of this woman with the ladder. Um, you know, we can all see she's in her spare bedroom. Uh, she's got her laptop on a ladder and she's got all kinds of stuff around her. But the people on that screen, all they see is her wall and they see her. And so she's got the lighting set up and everything looks very professional. And so that's what I mean, where sometimes you have to kind of trick, trick the client or, or the coworker. And the, the best way we found to do that, is just move that desk out from the wall, put the wall behind you and then put a canvas and maybe some photos of your family or a couple, you know, a couple other things, maybe a plant if you have some space. Um, and then you're, you're ready to go. Uh, also, it's really important to think about lighting. So do not set up where you have a window behind you. That's the worst thing you can do. Uh, you will look like you're in a witness protection program. People won't be able to uh, really connect with you on camera. So make sure that you have lighting, usually coming from the side. I've got this image here of this uh, you know, window on the side of the desk. Um, I have a window here and actually the sun just came out. So it's, it's a lot brighter than it was a minute ago. Um, but I, I like to have side lighting, uh, in order, in order to help the, my team see me. Another thing that's really important related to remote working is audio. So if, if you have a, a room where you can close a door, uh, I like to just use a microphone. So you don't have to put things on and off. Uh, you just talk and, and everybody can hear you. Uh, the, the microphone I have on the screen here is the one that's actually sitting on my desk. I found that it works well. It's not too expensive and uh, it's worked well for me. If you are in a space where you might have some traffic or some noise or some other things, then I highly recommend a headset. Um, and a headset with a noise canceling microphone is, is key. So a lot of our team members use those as well. And at the end, um, we're going to offer to send you some links to these things, the things that we use, the microphone and the headset. So I'll, I'll mention that again here at the end and we can share those with you. Another thing you want to think about, uh, your pets. So I'm a, I'm a pet guy. Um, I love dogs and cats and, uh, a lot of people on our team, uh, really love animals. And so you just want to think about your pets. So think about, um, you know, the, the common situation is, you know, the doorbell rings when you're in the middle of that meeting with the important client and the dogs, you know, bark or, you know, the cat walks across your keyboard and in front of your camera, you know, in the middle of the meeting or whatever it may be. So just make sure that you have your pets taken care of as well. They're a part of the family and they're going to have to transition to this concept of remote working, uh, just like the rest of the family. Also, you want to make sure that you have a security plan. So I want to throw a few things up here that are good just to think about related to security um, and kind of having a backup plan. So make sure that you keep data, work data on work computers. Uh, keep your computer security protection up to date. Make sure that you're utilizing secure Wi-Fi, encrypted drives, you know, antivirus software, those kind of things. Also, a password vault is really powerful. We use one. I'll share it with you here in just a minute. Uh, but it's a really great tool so that we can share passwords and things securely with our clients and with our team. Um, back up your data. Make sure that you have some system to back up. We have Google Drive. We, it's in our uh, platform or in our subscription. It offers unlimited space um, and also offers some backup functionality. Uh, also, don't open suspicious emails or links. So we, our team has been getting these weird emails that look like they're from me asking the team to do, you know, a task or a favor. Um, thankfully, our team is pretty savvy and, and can recognize those things that it's not for me. Uh, I actually get them as well. So from me asking myself for a favor. Uh, so just make sure that you're not opening those suspicious emails. Uh, and, and also know where to go if your home internet goes down. So during coronavirus, this is really important. If your home internet goes down, you can't go down to the restaurant or the library or other places. So you need to really make sure that you have a backup plan and maybe it's a personal hotspot, you know, on your phone or something else, uh, maybe a neighbor's Wi-Fi that they'll let you get on temporarily while you're trying to get yours back up. But if you're working remotely from home, make sure that you have a, 
a backup plan to your internet. Beware of the dragons. So employees and business leaders, the, these are the things that, that could go wrong with remote work. And the first one I've mentioned a few times, and that's isolation or cabin fever. And that's just feeling cooped up. Uh, it's, a, it's a mental health issue and we all need to get out of the house and get connected with each other, with nature and, and uh, to have some changes of scenery. And so just make sure that you're doing that. And right now during coronavirus, make sure you're doing that safely. Uh, I've heard uh, our mayor here in Arlington, Texas said that they're getting a lot of people going to the parks, which they love, but they don't want them congregating. And he, he said, come on guys, we don't want to have to close the parks. Um, so, so yeah, we want to do that safely right now during coronavirus. You also have the danger of working too much. So I've, I've talked to a lot of my employees uh, who have transitioned to remote work and they say, one, I'm productive, but two, I find myself struggling to kind of step away from the computer and uh, not be working all the time. And this is something that just comes with routine, comes with balance related to your, your own family. Um, oftentimes it's either people in leadership or people uh, that are single and don't have you know, others in the house that, that I find tend to do that. And that's not always the case. Um, but sometimes people are working too much and so we want to make sure that they're not doing that so it's not unhealthy. So you want to be able to just walk away. Uh, I like to use the concept of a stopping point, getting to a stopping point, saying this is where I'm going to end today and then just be able to mentally uh, turn that off. Also, you want to make sure from a health standpoint that you're investing in a good chair. Uh, I, I remember when I first invested in a good chair, it made a huge difference. And I put on here also, by the way, you don't only need a good chair, you also need to have good internet, a desk, you know, multiple screens, you need to invest in a good homework setup so that you can have a reliable connection and, and be productive in your homework environment. Um, I actually have a standing desk that will, uh, has a little motor on the, on the legs and I can run this over here and stand up. I like to stand up for part of the day. And so uh, that's something that I'm invested in and got through. Really, it's really helped me. Uh, another one goes without saying, diet and exercise can be a challenge when you're working remotely. Uh, you can feel isolated, you can work too much, and you can get lost uh, on diet and exercise. So we wanna make sure we encourage our team uh, to stay healthy physically um, while they're working remotely. So let's talk about the remote work toolbox. So these are some tools um, in different categories uh, the ones that we use, I have starred, but the other ones are great tools as well. So the kind of general productivity tools, you know, email calendar, et cetera, G Suite and Microsoft 365, those are the two uh, leaders that are cloud-based. Uh, we use G Suite, but have a lot of clients that use Microsoft. So those are both uh, great options. Uh, project management tools, uh, Teamwork, Trello, and Zoho Projects and Basecamp. Those would be four that I would highly recommend. They all have pros and cons. I'm happy to talk to you about uh, what might be a good fit for your team, uh, maybe in a, in a follow-up, but we use Teamwork primarily as our primary tool, and then we use Trello also for some of our projects. File sharing, I mentioned this earlier. You wanna make sure that everybody has access to the files that they need. Uh, we use Google Drive, but Dropbox and Box and um, others, there, there's many others out there for this. Uh, password protection, I mentioned this, lastpass.com is the tool that we use and we use for a long time, works very well. Uh, there's another one called One Password. Uh, there's also quite a few more, but those are some of the leading ones. Uh, video communication, uh, Zoom for me is the best out there. Uh, it's debatable, but is what we use uh, on our team and have used it for a long time and feel like it really provides the uh, quality as well as feature set that works really well for us. It's also very easy for a client who's never used it before to just click on that link and uh, quickly get on, get on with us. But Microsoft has a version called Microsoft Teams. Also Skype is one that's been around a long time that Microsoft also owns. Group chat. Google Hangouts and Slack, um, those are two of the largest out there and we use both of those. Google Hangouts is really our spot to talk everything about work. Slack is what we use right now uh, for kind of personal uh, water cooler type talk. Time tracking, so um, some of our 
remote work companies, uh, including Thrive, track our time. And so teamwork uh, allows us to do that. Uh, time Doctor is another more advanced level of, of time tracking, um, but those are both two options. CRM, um, we use Zoho CRM. We used to use Pipedrive, loved it, but kind of grew out of it in terms of our Salesforce size and, and uh, functionality that we needed. And so Zoho has been a great tool for us. And there's a, there's a million uh, CRM tools out there, Salesforce and a lot of others. And then uh, it's really important to be able to grab your screen and sometimes show. So Snagit uh, is a good tool. And then there's another one called Awesome Screenshot, which is a, a Chrome extension. So this is just a few tools. There, there's a whole lot more. And I'm sure uh, there's some that I don't have listed that you are using. And uh, I would say, you know, this is up to every, everybody has a different toolbox, but this is the toolbox that, that we use at Thrive. Um, let me talk about some extra resources. So um, we would love to share some of this stuff with you. And Aaron, why don't we put up our, our poll here? I'll, I'll drop these out here. So if you would like a copy of this presentation, um, we can get that to you. We're happy to share this. Again, this is kind of free information for the world that we want to help right now. Uh, if you would like links to the microphone and headset that we found that work well, you know, select that. Uh, we have a, a, an article that we call the ultimate guide to remote working, and we can get you a link to that. It goes into even more detail than what I've covered here, has a lot of other links and tools uh, as well that are available there. Um, I've asked my team to put together a list of pros and cons of remote work. We've asked 25 people on our team. And there's some really great content that, and thoughts that they've put together uh, that, that I didn't cover today. So if you'd like that information, we can get that to you. And then also, we are happy to do a follow-up call. So for free, no, no strings attached. We just want to help. So if we could do a free follow-up call with anyone on your team to talk about your specific situation, whether it's related to coronavirus or, um, or other remote working, or other things that you want to talk about. If you want to talk about digital marketing or anything else, we'd be happy to follow up and talk with you. Um, and we can make some people available on our team for that. So those are our extra resources. Hopefully you all can see the poll and can uh, tell us which of those things that you are interested in. And then I want to, before we finish here, I just want to offer a quote, final thought. Um, this is from Maya Angelou, American author. And I saw this today and thought it'd be a great one to share with, with you all. So it says, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. And the concept here is that sometimes we don't always control what happens externally. Um, none of us saw this coronavirus pandemic, global pandemic coming, uh, the effects that it's having on our economy, on our own individual businesses, uh, on our families. Uh, sometimes we just can't control it, um, and it's it's impacting us. It's going to change. Uh, it's going to change some of us of what happens to us. But we have the choice to choose how we respond, and so we we need to uh, stay optimistic for my business leaders and employees out there. Um, if, if you are a person of influence at your business, please stay optimistic. Please encourage your coworkers and encourage the people on your team to hang in there, adapt and overcome, uh, be safe, be aggressive right now on safety. I've been telling my team, be aggressive on safety. I do not want anyone on our team to, to catch the coronavirus. And so let's, let's be aggressive with safety right now until we can get on the other side of this. So there's, there's some thoughts. Um, now I wanna open it up to some questions. So let's see. I've got a few questions. If you have another question, go ahead and type it there in the Q&A box and we'll try to address these. So first question says, do you require the same business hours for every remote employee or is there flexibility? That's a great question. So um, it depends on the job is what I would say. If I have an employee that their job is to be client facing, then I ask them to be available during client, their clients' business hours, because that's part of their job. Um, we have people that live in different continents. Uh, we have a couple people that live in South Africa. It's seven hours ahead of central time, but
but their primary job is to project do project management and be on meetings with clients. And so they are working a uh, off standard uh, hours. If you have a job that's not client facing, then we have more flexibility related to that. And so we do still want that person to be available to communicate and collaborate with the team. And so a lot of times what we do is we'll have some days of the week where they'll work their own hours and some days of the week where they'll, they'll work kind of our hours. And because we are located here in Texas in central time, we sort of treat that as the, uh, the, the primary time zone and then others adjust. Uh, if it's a U.S. based, what we do is really simple. It's 830 to 530 central or your time zone. So 830 to 530 Eastern, 830 to 530 Mountain, 830 to 530 uh, Pacific. And so we have some overlap. Uh, another question, are your remote employees hourly salary contract or a combination? Um, so it's a difficult question to answer. All of my US based remote employees are on salary. So we, we have, these are full time jobs that we're hiring people no matter where in the world they are. And so we have a payroll provider that um, works in every, every state and handles all the details of that. Uh, and then we have some people overseas that are full-time employees, but they can't be on salary because they're not in the United States. So they can't be W-2, um, but we pay them uh, a contract rate. Good questions. Um, let's see, I've got, let me look at my timer. We've got about nine minutes left. I have a couple other questions. Um, yeah, so I think, I think this person's asking about Zoom. Why did we choose Zoom? Did Zoom offer you something better in regards of connection or training staff that other systems didn't with remote workers? Uh, Jeremy, no, they, they have not. We chose Zoom. They didn't, uh, the primary reason we chose Zoom is the quality of the video and audio was better than the other tools that we were using. And the process of getting a client to connect to Zoom was the simplest and had the least friction and so we had the most success of clients simply getting on and being successful instead of fumbling around and trying to figure out how to uh, get on and connect with each other. So that's, that's why we chose Zoom. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Um, Nate, how often do you recommend connecting with your team throughout the day? Well, it depends on if you're talking about myself or someone else on the team. Um, I'm connecting to the people that, that report directly to me regularly um, throughout the day as just as if we were working in the office together, I'm constantly communicating with them on Zoom, on chat. Um, and then I ask my, my managers to do the same of their teams. I think the important part uh, of, of a remote workforce is putting people into small teams or organizing yourselves into these what we call pods so that you have this small group environment and allowing yourselves to you know have a facilitator of each of those or a manager of each of those teams so I'm I am um, I mean we use a calendar just like any other business and so uh, you know, we'll connect with people in, in meetings um, sometimes it's meetings where we're all in there together and then sometimes I just lock down. I, I have what I call the cone of silence. I'll, I'll block out my calendar and I won't talk to anybody else because I've got some task or some uh, priority that I'm working on and, and don't want to be interrupted. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Yeah, so Kevin asked, do we ever have all of our US employees together for in-person? Yes, we do. So Thrive Camp, I uh, mentioned that on one of the slides but we do that annually and we get everyone together. Um, this year we did it a little bit different. We moved the months that we used to be in October. This year we did it in January. And also this year we made it optional so they could come if they wanted to, uh, unless you were a manager and we required our managers to come so they could interact with the people on their team. And it was great. Every year it's awesome. It's a big investment uh, in terms of financially, but it's, it's worth it. It's highly worth it. Um, let's see, another question, Ashton, uh, outside of the coronavirus times, do your clients or potential clients have any hesitation with Thrive being a remote company? 
I like how you did that. Ashton's one of my employees, so he's uh, setting me up for a, an easy one here. So yes, we do have clients or potential clients that sometimes are a little hesitant that we are a remote company. Maybe they are a traditional company. They've always worked with traditional office companies. Uh, I had one client tell me one time that I want to be able to drive down there and wring your neck. <laughs> and so that was a, a great way to start a working relationship. Um, great. So I look forward to you coming down and wringing my neck. Um, but we just, we're upfront about it. We're, we're uh, transparent and open that this is how we are organized and how we work and we've done it very successfully. And uh, you're going to, you're going to like it. We're productive and we're able to get the job done and we've got great people on our team. So we, we work through that uh, with them. Um, maybe one more question. So let's see if we have, have any others. Looks like we've got one coming in here. It's being typed. So um, let, me, let me jump back here while that question is being typed and just say, again, if you are interested in any of these extra resources, a copy of the presentation, um, the links to the microphone or headset, the ultimate guide to remote working, the pros and cons of working remotely, or if you'd like to have a follow-up call with someone on our team, talk about your specific situation, we'd be happy to do that. Please fill out that, um, that poll and we can make sure that, that we follow up with you. So um, Kevin has asked, what is your recommendation on companies that have a production workforce and a potential remote workforce how do you manage the morale between those differences? Okay, I, I'm gonna translate. I think um, I think what you mean is what if you have a company that has a, look, a kind of a combination of office and remote workforce? Well, actually at Thrive, we do that. So I, I work in the home office. We do have an office building and there's about 10 or so of us that work here every day. Um, I choose to work in the office because my, uh, the last time I worked from home was before I had any kids. And so my kids have not adjusted to remote work. Our routine is that when I'm home, I'm home. Um, and so when I'm at the office, I'm at work. Uh, I live about five minutes from my office. So it's a very close commute. Um, but yes, we have a home office and then we have a remote workforce. What we do is we, um, we also have others that live in this area that don't come into the office every day. So we have Wednesday office days and about 15 or other or so people that don't work here every day come. And we have a team lunch every week for our locals. And we just go to lunch together and, uh, and connect with each other. But then we, we also try to create situations where there are regional connections. So uh, we have kind of a core people in Florida. So we'll, every quarter we try to host a uh, office day in Florida and we rent a co-working space uh, that we have a relationship with there and then people drive from Jacksonville and Tampa and Miami and they come to Orlando and work together there for that day. Um, so I would say that you just find the way that works for you um, but you want to make sure that you're connecting and not isolating. But the danger of the combination is when the remote workforce is the minority and then those people not only feel isolated because they're remote, but they feel isolated because they're in the minority. In our case, the remote team is the majority. We have more people that work from home than we do have work in the office. And so we just make sure that we're including them. I, I can't tell you how many times I will go across the hall, you know, when we have people here right now, I'm the only one in the office. Uh, so everyone's at home because of coronavirus, but I'll go across the hall and meet with Josiah, who's my uh, director of sales. And then he'll have on his screen two or three of other people from our team. So for us, it's just become natural that there's that in person and there's that remote and we're all just connecting together. We also have set up a great conference room where we have two really large TVs uh, right in front of the conference table and a camera and a microphone. And so that we can have a meeting at the conference table and include the people that are in person and the people that are remote and they can feel like they're right there in the room with us. So good questions. Okay, um, if you have other questions, uh, I would love to answer those. Please post those and we'll try to follow up. But I just wanna thank everybody for being here. This has been an honor to share this information with you. Hopefully, again, like I said, there's been some value to you um, related to this. And we're just really thankful to be able to offer this to the world 
And uh, I just want to wish you all the best. So thank you for, for being here today. And we would love to continue to help you if we can. So let us know. But hope you have a great week. And thanks for taking time out of your day today to be with us. Thanks. Bye-bye.